investigation and treatment of abnormal heart rhythms or arrhythmias. Um, and in many ways, these are electrical problems. So I'm one of the heart's electricians, and you've already heard from the plumbers. <laughs> and why is the electricity so important? It's the spread of electricity through heart muscle which dictates how fast and how efficiently it beats. Without an electrical impulse, nothing else works. It has been known for many years, but it was first recorded on paper in the late 1800s on a rather complicated ECG machine. So what can go wrong with the heart rhythm? It can go too slow. And if the heart goes too slow, it can result in faints, blackouts, tiredness, fatigue, and fortunately, in very rare circumstances, could result in death. And at the other end of the spectrum, it can go too fast. Now, who can be affected by heart rhythm problems? Well, it's literally something which can manifest through the whole seven ages of man to the point where abnormal heart rhythms can now even be diagnosed in the fetus, in the womb. And who can it affect? Well, it can affect people who are otherwise extremely fit and healthy. But likewise, it's often associated with people who have other heart problems. It's a manifestation of their prior heart attack or their valve disease. Arrhythmias have recently been given the, a recognition I think they deserve in in uh, papers such as the National Service Framework for, for Heart Disease, published by a Department of Health. And it's been recognised that there are certain areas within rhythm problems which need a heart rhythm specialist. And that's why centres like Oxford and other teaching centres are really mm. sort of leading and developing the field of rhythm problems being a, a specialist area. On the subject of research in EP, it's what helps to stimulate expertise, drive things forward, and try and be a leading centre in the UK and internationally. But it's very patient-focused and procedure-centred research, and it's very much aimed at improving the safety and the effectiveness of what we do. But we also look at, we've published recently on how is it best to treat people who present to the emergency department with life-threatening um, problems. And also, the role of people's attitudes and risk, both physicians and patients, to the sudden death and defibrillator treatment. But another area in which we're hopefully leading the way is through education and support. And one of the things we're most proud of in, in our department is our 4A Rhythmia nurses, who I'm sure many of you would have come into contact with, who lead the way in the UK. They're the, the first port of call for people phoning up for advice or wanting information, but they can prescribe they actually take part in the procedures. They cross many bridges. They're cardiac technicians as well as nurses. They help out with ablations and with defibrillator treatment. We're establishing remote home monitoring for people with implanted devices who live an hour, an hour and a half's journey away, who need regular checkups in the department. We're very proud of training up junior doctors in the field of electrophysiology. And two of our recent trainees have been appointed to consultant positions around the country, which is excellent uh, news for them, but very sad for us because I have to work a lot harder. So the future of electrophysiology in Oxford, we're helping to develop and support pacemaker and defibrillator services in our surrounding district general hospitals. Again, it's so that people with these devices don't need to have to travel, but we can support these institutions as they're developing their own services. Arrhythmia support groups, very important. The Arrhythmia Alliance um, has been a great advocate for um, arrhythmia patients. And what we want to do is to grow, to help meet demand. We're just at the tip of the iceberg of some of these rhythm problems, and we want to be able to provide Oxfordshire and beyond with better, more effective treatments sooner. And this is going to be done by having three EP-capable laboratories in the new heart centre and developing exciting and new technologies. And this is just one example of a, the future of electrophysiology, the robotic arm, where rather than standing next to the patient, and manipulating the wires and catheters by hand, we have very sophisticated joystick-controlled catheter ablation. So this catheter would be inside the heart, and very precise movements can be done by integrating echocardiography, ultrasound, um, fluoroscopy radiation, uh, and catheter manipulation to really maximize the success rates of our ablation procedures and minimize complications.